You know, the phrase envelope pusher is often overused and often not justified. Well, our next guest isn't an envelope pusher. It's someone, well, who's just created an entire new envelope. Welcome author and longtime transgender activist, Willie Wilkinson. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now, so you have just won an award, one of many. I mean, you've won awards from the and National Lesbian and Gay Journalist Association, which I was one of the founders of. Right. You have written books. Uh, your wife is working on a book. You're raising a family. And you just won the Phoenix Award from an organization whose acronym I love, <laughs> API Cutesy. Yeah. <laughs> and I always get the whole thing wrong. So please explain what API Cutesy stands for. Asian and Pacific Islander, queer women, and transgender community. Great, which is why they did API QC. Right, I get exactly. It. <laughs> <laughs> but now you got the Phoenix Award for your ongoing work. You're uh, one of the founders, the founder of the Transgender Law Center. Oh, well, I wouldn't say that. Well, I mean, I started the Healthcare Access Project, but I didn't found the organization. Got itself. it. So you founded the Healthcare Access, and you're the author of a book that's coming out this year on the edge of race and gender. Born on the edge of race and gender, a voice for cultural competency. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Let's go back to your your birth. Your talk about. I mean, you won, you won this wonderful award from the uh, National Lesbian and Gay Journalist Association about an article you wrote for the San Francisco Chronicle, basically telling the story of how the issue of marriage equality and transgender uh, rights kind of merged with the story of your parents' biracial marriage. Right. I mean, I was looking at the intersections, the social political intersections between my parents' interracial yeah. marriage at a time when uh, there had just been the repeal of the anti, the anti miscegenation Act in, mm -hmm. uh, uh, or law in California. Um, and it was considered unusual and unnatural. And so I was really drawing that parallel between the marriage equality movement in 2004 when Gavin right. Newsom allowed us to get married. Because your, uh, your mother is Asian. My mom's Chinese from Hawaii. Chinese. And your father? English, Irish, Scottish from Oakland. So <laughs> you came out kind of a mutt. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> what did they think of this article? Did they see the intersection of these worlds that you were writing about and about which so much of your community work is My based? parents? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Um, you know, they're of a different era, and um, I think they didn't really have a political or politicized um, lens on their experience, on their experience as an interracial couple, but they mm -hmm. certainly resonated with those dynamics and understood the, that connection. You know, I mean, as a kid growing up in Richmond, Virginia, very soon after the, the laws making it legal for African Americans, blacks, and, and whites to marry, you know, I, uh -huh. I thought about that very much because so much of the language that is now used, whether it's about marriage equality or about LGBT rights, about gender identity, some of the arguments against all that are the exact same language that was used in the American South against interracial marriage or about uh, the laws here that impacted your parents. Right. Where do you, what do you think is going to be the last battle in all of this? Do you think the opposition is finally just getting tired of the fighting? Apparently not. I mean, there are so many bills that are trying to prevent uh -huh. transgender people from peeing in peace, you know. Uh -huh. um, just the, 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 the trans discrimination bathroom bills are uh -huh. all over the place because, you know, they've lost with marriage equality. So now they're attacking transgender people. And I think we're going to see a lot of that. We're, we just saw another one in California. So um, I don't know. Uh, I mean, they are really ludicrous because, I mean, are people really going to be carted every time they need to use the restroom? Um, but, you know, we are certainly having to fight those. Mm -hmm. Do you, well, I would think, just based on your writing and your history, that you're an optimist, even though you're always <laughs> fighting. I am an optimist, yes. Um, where do you see these battles going, as you call them? I've never heard that before, but I'm going to use it, the peeing and peace laws. Uh, <laughs> where are they going to go? Where do I see those going? Yeah. Well, unfortunately, we're seeing so many of those pop up in states. Um, we'll probably see more. Um, but I think ultimately it's impossible to enforce. You know, and people who aren't transgender being read as being gender nonconforming in some way and, you know, that being held into question or people who, who are transgender, you know, are, are really people are going to have to show their papers in order to use the facilities. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's ridiculous. Um, so I think, you know, over time we're going to see how ridiculous that is. But a 
um, unfortunately the opposition is funded and they're attacking, uh, you know, bath folks using the bathrooms as well as the kids in the schools. Right. Um, you know, kids, dis trans and gender nonconforming kids need to be able to be themselves. And now we have uh, schools that are really recognizing that and parents who are honoring their kids' ideas. Well, and then you have even legislators. I mean, the, the work of, of Mike Honda, I thought his, oh, uh, yeah. his comments about his transgender granddaughter have just been yeah. really incredible. Did you ever think that you would see that? I mean, not only as a member of the transgender community, but as an Asian American. Yeah, as an Asian American and as a trans person, I'm thrilled to see that kind of um, leadership modeled um, for somebody of his stature. And just a beautiful story of the family coming to accept this child and, you know, talking about the, the parents talking about their struggles to understand it and the child being so much happier and more and more we're seeing that. You know, and I'm somebody who, I mean, I changed my name to Willie when I was nine in the early 70s because I'm old ass now. You know, <laughs> and at the time, of course, there was no cultural awareness, certainly no structural support in my school system in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I have a certain grief that I wasn't allowed to transition at that time when I really wanted to and was trying mm -hmm. to socially transition. And, you know, now to see this awareness happening in society and school policies and, of course, AB 1266, which uh, came Assembly into effect. Assembly Bill 1266, yes, yeah. In 2014, allowing uh, kids in California public schools who are transgender to go to school in accordance with their gender identity. I mean, that's really powerful for me mm -hmm. to see that now. And it's taken so long. And and, and there's so much work that still needs to be done uh, because there's certainly kids around the country that are struggling to be recognized for who they are. Right. Now, you know, I said in the in the tease that, you know, there are people who are called envelope pushers and there are people like you just like create a whole new <laughs> well, piece of paper and a whole new envelope. Well, but, that's generous. Yeah, well, no, but I mean, there have been, you know, a lot of very well publicized victories for you and, and publicity about your work. What's been the hardest loss? and the work you've done. What's been a battle that you thought, boy, that really got me? Well, um, I mean, I think it, when I think of the grief I've experienced, I think the Prop 8 campa campaign in California was a very measurable time. That was a, uh, a time in which I understood, you know, who was with me and who wasn't. And, and, and I lived in a pocket in Oakland that had a lot of Mormon individuals who were pointing like five signs towards our house across the street and, and around us. And so it was a, a difficult time because people who are our neighbors, who we thought were our friends, were on the streets screaming at us as we drove by trying to take our child to preschool, you know. And so that, that was a, a moment that felt really difficult. Did that make you, was that hard as a parent? Did you ever feel sometimes like, well, God, maybe I should have just shut up for the kids? No. I wasn't going to shut up. <laughs> I'm not going to shut up. But I think it was, it, it was, there was a lot of misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. And I actually tell this story in my book because, um, you know, the neighbor, she came over one night very furtively and she brought us some little treats and she, you know, kind of crouched. She wanted us to close the drapes. She didn't want her family to know that she was at our house, but she said a light had gone on for her that day because her coworker had explained how interracial marriage was similar to this issue of marriage equality. And she really thought that Prop 8 was going to mean that children were going to be taught that being gay is okay in school. And there was all this misinformation about, oh, it's going to impact the children, right? Mm -hmm. And so she, she told us, you know, she was with us. Um, even though she, she couldn't do any, she couldn't even she couldn't do anything about the fact that her husband was the one leading the campaign of folks on the street, yes on aid and all this kind of stuff, um, and he was he was part of the Mormon Church, and you know she couldn't do anything to change her family and community, but she understood that it was really about us being able to live right. our lives. We've so. only got about 20 okay. seconds left, but I, I want to have you back, because I want you to come back once the book has been published, what Fantastic. the reviews are. What do you want the book to do in a few seconds? Well, I hope that it um, transforms um, by educating um, about these issues, cultural competency, public health, and policy advocacy issues, because we need cultural, institutional, and legislative change. Paulinda, thanks for being on the show with us. Thanks so much Good for luck to me. you and your wife for the book. We'll see okay. you in Oakland. Thank you. This is David Perry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week on 10%.